Hi, this is Marcia, and this is part one of the Blended Learning Coaching Blocks. Today, we're going to be talking about reflective coaching and what reflective coaching looks like after you have deployed your first year of learning studios. Okay, let's get started. So this is part one of the blended learning coaching blocks. What we're gonna be talking about today is the reflective planning piece. What is reflective planning? Well, reflective planning is when we take the elements of, you already have deployed blended learning throughout the year, you've taken some elements and you try to put it in, but reflective planning is looking back to see where maybe studios might have fit a little bit better. I'm gonna give you a scenario. And the scenario is talking about a teacher who went through the coaching cycle with me, but still was very hesitant about implementing studios because she just couldn't figure out where it fit. So what I did with her was I sat back down at the end of the school year, this was in April, and we talked about, okay, let's just go over again the definition of all the learning studios. Small group, independent practice, digital content, future ready skills and this one gets teachers caught up all the time it's like what do you mean by future ready skills this teacher had been working with me for the whole year but you know there was just hurdles in her way that just really was a struggle for understanding true deployment of studios so I even after I explained the studios again I went through and gave her examples of each one according to her content she is an algebra two te algebra one teacher, sorry. And so I was just giving her examples like in small group, you could be using anchor charts, you could be reteaching, you could give sample problems, give open-ended questions. I did this for every single one of our studios and I tied it back to our content. Like in independent practice, it's a time for students to make mistakes. It's a time for them to use Mastery Connect questions. That's our online program where they can get some quick data. It's practice. So I kept giving her all these ideas like, oh, you already are using Edpuzzle. You're already using an earpod. The point is that I really just sat down and just broke down the walls again by showcasing her content and the elements that she is already currently using in her classroom. Light bulbs started to go off. Like, okay, I know what you're talking about. Oh, for vocabulary, maybe I don't have any academic language that I need to talk about, but maybe I can use that as a spiral or a review studio. All of this was great. It was a great review. It was quick. It was to the point, but I really made it meaningful for her and her team as far as how these studios align. Then the magic happens. With reflective planning, after we've gone through and we reviewed all the studios, we went backwards. This is a calendar of her pacing guide from January. And what we did was we just looked at the calendar as a team. Where would you put studios in? So what she did was automatically looked at her calendar. She's like, oh, review days. I understand how to do studios on review days because I've already taught the content. So it's a review for the test. And I'm like, perfect. I like that idea. So we automatically highlighted those days as building in studios for next year. This was a January calendar. We're now looking at it backwards from April. So we're in April and we're looking about what she had previously taught. So that made sense to her. Then I'm like, but to be really consistent, we should be doing it once a week. And the reason why once a week is important is because it really just builds up those routines and procedures for the students. So we added in two other days, that first week back after winter break, and then right there before the MAP assessment, we added in two more studio days. So we did this for the month of January and we did it for the month of February. By looking backwards to see where she could have put studios in after that quick review of what studios are, it all made sense to her. Reflective planning is just a really good way to pre-plan for the following year, but also to see like, oh, I could have put studios here. I understand now that I've done one year of deploying blended learning studios, I now understand that yes, it's important to do it multiple days and where it fits best.
All right, Refractive Planning is one of the best ways to get our teachers to onboard again for the following year and to generate that sustainability.